Hi everybody. So in the last video, we were able to create a Spring Boot application that runs on port 8080. So in this video, we'll take it one step further and we'll create our first endpoint. So this is our demo application. And as you can see, it's running on port 8080. What we'll do is we'll create an endpoint slash welcome, which will be our first endpoint that would just simply simply return hello world. So as you can see, this is on my browser and we'll try implementing this. But before heading into the coding part, let's get some basics cleared. So now I will show you how this interaction works. So first we have the user. The user will request an endpoint on the browser. So it could be slash welcome or it could be slash get employees or it could be slash get students, etc. So when I say that the user will request this on the browser, it essentially means that the user is simply going around and uh, surfing through the net basically. So for example, the user opened YouTube. That's about it. So that's how uh, that's how it's happening. So the user will request this. Once the user finishes requesting this, then this request endpoint slash welcome in this case goes to the Spring Boot app. So slash welcome over here will head on to the Spring Boot application and it will enter into demo application as this is the main method of the Spring Boot application. This is the entry point of the Spring Boot application. So it will go here and then from here it goes into a controller class. So we need to create a controller class. It will look like this. OK, with the annotation of rest controller and here is a request mapping stating slash welcome, which simply returns a string hello world. So what is a controller over here? The controller is basically the layer. Controller is the layer over here, and this layer is the interaction between the user and Spring Boot app. So the controller layer is the interaction between the user and a Spring Boot application. So it's the medium between them. So in the front end, we'll have several endpoints like slash welcome, slash get employee stash, slash get students, and then it would redirect the request to the Spring Boot application. So that's how it's working. So at the rate rest controller is an annotation that you need to put. So in Spring Boot, you need to add such annotations. OK, for the whole application to work. Similarly, at the rate request mapping is another such annotation. Now here slash welcome is the first endpoint that we create and it returns hello world. Now there's another important point to note to note down here. What is the request and response body of an endpoint? So in, in the industrial world, we always talk about request and response body. So for every endpoint, there is a request and response body defined. Um, so in the case of slash welcome, the request body is nothing. It's basically empty. As you can see, we are not passing any request here in the parameter. Here we're not passing any request. Now, but what's the response body? Response is essentially a string, which is hello world. So this is the request and response body of this endpoint. So when you code this down, you need to rerun the Spring Boot application for it to compile the new changes. And then when you head on to the browser and hit this endpoint, you will get hello world as a response. Now slash number is one more such endpoint that I simply created that returns one. So if we check this out as well, it just simply returns one. So what's the request and response body for this endpoint? Request is again nothing. Response is integer. So that's how this and that's how you create your first Spring Boot application. So then in the next subsequent videos, we'll talk about Spring Data JPA, which is the CRUD repository uh, interaction in the Spring Boot application, in which we we'll start introducing the world of entities and services. So until then, thank you.